Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. It's a new year filled with endless possibilities and so much potential to manifest the life that we're envisioning for ourselves. But that takes a little planning. Being a few years out of school, I'm at a place right now where I'm still quite ambitious, but I really value mindful and intentional productivity. To me, productivity is about creating a system that allows you to do your most meaningful work and then you can use that time you get back to go and live your best life. I just did a couple videos about how I reset for this new year, which included showing my yearly planner and my goal setting system in Notion. These are gonna be linked in the description, by the way, if you wanna check it out. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I use my weekly planner in this new goal setting system that allows me to use the power of Notion and Google Calendar to effectively plan my weeks. If this is your first time here, my name is Amira, and on this channel, I talk about mindful productivity, wellness, and small actionable steps we can take to create more balance and find meaning in our current journeys. I love a good Notion tutorial, so let's get started. So getting into our weekly planner, here. First thing we have over in this corner is our navigation. So that's where we can find our 2024 yearly planning and our master tasks list, the large database that links all of these pages together, our 2024 vision board and our ideal week builder, which we'll get into in just a moment. And then down here, we have some cute little quotes. Over here, we have our synced block with our vision board in it, right? So this came from our vision board planner. I also have a video on that. The block is also synced not only to the vision board planner, but to the 2024 yearly planner as well. See, you can kind of have a sneak peek there. It's in that corner. And then over here, we have also some synced blocks for our weekly affirmation and our reminder. So you can hit new reminder when you'd like to input a new reminder. The weekly planning that I have in the Notion pack just kind of splits it off and puts your ID week builder right about here. But this is my own template for my personal use. So I have my ID week builder in the navigation. So when you get your pack, you can feel free to do the same. Just drag and drop over to this section. So clicking over to our ideal week builder. So in my yearly planning video, I mentioned how one of my goals that I went more specifically into involved me using my ID week builder to basically reevaluate my schedule and the hours that I'm currently working and just kind of modifying that so that I can input daily wellness practices that are sustainable for me. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. In our I Do Week Builder, we have a few thought starters, right? So we have what are our non-negotiables, what I want to protect. I kind of already started filling this out, but if we toggle down here, I said that moving forward, I'd like to protect my morning and evening routines, as well as time for adequate rest so that I'm able to achieve consistent energy levels throughout my week. I'd like to prioritize movement as well in my week. How do I plan to work towards carving out my ideal week? What are the small bite-sized chunks and actionable steps that I can take right now? I said the biggest roadblock is teaching at times that aren't the same throughout the entire week and this basically leads to inconsistent sleep time and subsequent energy level dips throughout the week. If I can work towards having a more reasonable schedule with more reasonable hours at around 8 to 9 a.m. to 2 to 3 p.m. for work, carve out my content around that which includes Friday being content days and Saturday, Sunday being rest slash hybrid days. And I think that's a good place to start. And then we can go from there. And then I have, when do I feel the most awake, creative and energized? What did I put? I put that if I have adequate rest, I feel the most awake and energized around 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Those are my peak hours. But I'm able to have spurts of creativity throughout the days if I'm able to sit down and focus long enough. So moving on to planning and visualizing our ideal week. Essentially, this is a little board view here. This is what I currently have just as examples that I put in my Mindful Life Goals Pack, but I'm gonna go through and actually tailor this specific to me. So if we click on our context here, we have morning routine, evening routine, personal, business work slash project a and then you can always click these three dots to go ahead and change that for yourself so i'm going to go ahead and start to delete these so we can start from scratch essentially and then i'm going to start to input things that i want to include in my ideal week So now I've completed my ideal week. So my structure for the weekends, right? Saturday and Sunday looks a little bit different than the structure for the weekdays, Monday through Friday, right? 
just kind of go into an overview of what I'm thinking, what I'm hoping to work towards Monday through Thursday. Looks about the same, right? I'm waking up in the morning, doing my morning stretches, my hygiene, making sure that my breath does not stink before I go throughout my day, right? Do my skincare, all that good stuff. My morning stretches, right? So getting a little bit of movement in there, getting the blood flowing after a long night of sleeping and then making a warm drink, maybe some morning matcha, some coffee if I'm really feeling coffee that morning, setting intentions while I make that and then sitting down to gratitude journal. So I really wanna hope to get that gratitude journal practice in when I wake up in the mornings, right? So carving out that space for that. Hoping to get some movement in, so whether that be heading down to the gym, getting some cardio in, some weights, maybe some Pilates, mat Pilates, and then of course coming back, taking a shower, eating, etc., all that good stuff, and then heading to the studio to teach. And then after that, coming home, maybe taking a little break, and then getting some content in. And then after that, so my partner, he and I will kind of make dinner, eat dinner, maybe watch a little bit of TV, whatever show is on right now, or maybe a movie. Then after that, we will clear everything away, do the dishes, and then I can start my wind down routine. I can have my little warm tea. Currently, I'm liking hibiscus with a little magnesium in it to get me sleepy. And then I will also be doing my French, right? I'm currently learning French, going into my journal, and then documenting my reflections for the day. And then I can sit back and relax with my Kindle as well until I get tired and wanna go to sleep. So that's basically what Monday through Thursday kind of looks like the same thing. Of course, things might change. Definitely giving myself some wiggle room with that. And then Friday, same kind of thing, right? Waking up, my morning stretches, my hygiene, making my warm drinks, setting my intentions, gratitude journaling. Basically, Friday is a content day, but I've also kept myself open for private. And then depending on how I'm feeling, maybe I want to get a little mat Pilates session in. I can feel free to put that there as well. And then same thing here, right? We're prioritizing that wind down period, that evening routine. Saturday looks a little different, kind of the same things, but essentially I wanna leave Saturday and Sunday for more of a hybrid slash rest day. I, in the morning, same thing, right? Waking up, morning stretches, hygiene, making my warm drinks, setting my intentions. And then I do teach on Saturdays. I teach maybe a one to two classes, right? This is the one that I really, really enjoy teaching at. And then I get to have the studio all to myself afterwards. After my teaching, then I'll do my post teaching session, which typically is about an hour, hour and a half. And then essentially I have that time afterwards to be free, maybe going to the store on the way home, hitting the town with my friends, my partner, fam, etc. And then coming home again, either we do dinner at home or dinner out and then after that coming back in to start our wind down routine and then the last day sunday is essentially the same thing right so we have our morning routine and then a tidy up declutter so this is the start of the week right that sunday reset so i'm really hoping to spend an hour or so hopefully there isn't too much to tidy up but either doing a quick general tidy up or maybe picking a problem area a pain point in the home to tackle and then hopefully it'll be good. Same thing here, open time, time to rest, time to spend with friends and family, my partner, et cetera, and or self-care time, just booking in time to literally do nothing if that's what I feel like I need to do. And that's what I feel like I need to do. As we start to get into the evening time, maybe prepping my classes for the next week, of course, dinner with partner, cooking dinner, and then our evening routine. So this is essentially my skeleton of my ideal week. This is how I would think about it. Just putting in things that I want to prioritize time for, not necessarily a schedule, just having an idea of what things I want to prioritize for what day. We have a little prompt that just says, now it's time to use our Google Calendar to create our ideal week. So essentially we're just gonna open up our calendar. We're gonna make a separate calendar called Amira's Ideal Week, and then start creating those actual time blocks based on our weekly map up above. So we're gonna do that in just one second. We're gonna go back to our weekly planning to show you the last database that works with our yearly planning database. So this was our Ideal Week Builder up here. Again, when we scroll down here in this space, we just have a little to-do list. So you would put today's date, essentially, whatever today's date is. Let's say the date is Tuesday, January 2nd of 2024. It's 2024 now. And my two items are to essentially teach and then edit. So here I like to utilize something called the daily highlight, which is basically where we have all our tasks, but our highlight is essentially choosing maybe one or two tasks that as long as we get these things done, we consider the day a success, right? Sometimes we're overwhelmed. Sometimes we don't have the capacity to do everything on our task list. 
But as long as we choose the most important things and at least check those things off, right? Our daily highlight, our daily adventure for the day, then we are good to go. And I got this idea from Ali Abdal. He talks about, again, the daily highlight, the daily adventure, what we're pursuing for the day. So let's say on Tuesday, my general to-do list is basically teach, edit, go to store to grab XYZ grocery item um, and then mail off documents. My daily highlight or highlights teaching and I really want to get my editing done. As long as I check these two off, I'm basically golden for the day and I consider it a success. And then moving down here to our tasks. So I have my business hub tasks down here, which I won't really scroll down to because personal stuff. This here is what you actually see in your goals pack system. This board view of all the days sort of listed out like we have them in our ideal week builder, right? So if we go back up to our yearly planning, we have our goals here, of course. But when we get into quarter one, we have a few action plans. So I have three action plans as of yet. My partner and I want to visit Austin sometime this quarter just to see if we let, like the city visit. We've never been to Austin. We have family in the area close by in Texas. So we just gonna wanna see what Austin is giving. So right, my action plan for that is in January, sometime in January, figuring out the travel length, the actual dates, what the trip's gonna cost us, where we're, you know, staying, what we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. And then in February, actually planning that specific itinerary with a travel template. I do have a travel template that I actually have for free in my Notion Hub. If you wanna grab that, same travel template I'll be using to plan that itinerary. So let's say that I go to input a task and my specific task, let's say it is researching hotels or stay. The context is personal. The quarter is quarter one. That auto fills, right? Because we're in the quarter one breakdown here. Our due date, let's say our due date is January 22nd, just an arbitrary due date. Our priority is, it's coming up soon, so our priority is high priority. Demand is low energy. And then the estimated duration, let's say, let's just give it like 45 minutes. Now we have all this filled out. This checkbox here is just to say whether we've completed the task or not. And then if we go over here, this property is now what's gonna link us back to our weekly planner. So I said that this property is due on January 22nd. So let's say I go to plan for this upcoming week. I wanna have that task done on Friday, let's say. I'm gonna go into this property called day and then simply click on Friday. And then if you go back to our weekly planning and scroll down, it pops up on Friday. And then you can kind of click in here, open in the side peak. We have all the information that we need, researching hotels for stay, the day, the due date, all that good stuff that we just put in in our quarterly breakdown. And then I made the accomplished checkbox available for us to see so that we can easily go in and click accomplish. Once you click accomplished, it disappears from the database, but no worries if you did it by accident, you can always go back to your master tasks list. This is basically the main task list that we have. If you go into your archive tasks, it'll show you the tasks that you've checked completed here. If you wanna uncheck it, it disappears from your archive tasks into your main task list and by proxy back to your weekly tasks as well. Very cool system. Essentially, it allows you to keep your current tasks front of center but it also allows you to go back and look at your old tasks that you've done. It's just tucked away in a separate page for your ease. So that was a little bit of an overview of my weekly planner. I'm gonna go ahead and input all of my tasks in. Basically at the start of every week is when I do that. I can easily see what I have going on for the week. And then now we're gonna get into the Google Calendar portion of this video. I love me some Google Calendar. We're gonna be basically inputting our ideal week schedule in there. And then we're gonna also talk about how I actually manage taking my tasks from my weekly planner. And now I can actually input them into time blocks for me to easily access throughout my day. So I'm essentially gonna split this window up a little bit, head into my ideal week builder and start building our ideal week essentially, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of these off. So let's say six to 8 a.m. is wake up morning routine. And then I'm just gonna go in here and say that it repeats, basically it's daily, that's six to 8 a.m. So this is my ideal week for Monday, for example. So that's how I would input it here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do it for the rest of the days.
Here she is in all her glory. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on everything else so I can see the comparisons between my ideal week and what I actually have going on. So I like to utilize what's called task batching. You probably all know and heard of task batching, right? I'm gonna go ahead and use the task feature to write actually the specific tasks that I have to do in my content block. Instead of an event, I'm going to turn it into a task. Let's say edit the video. Then when I'm done, I can click mark completed, right? So I have that task, edit the video in my content block here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish planning for the week and then we'll come back and see what it is. Okay, so I'm back. It's starting to look a little crazy, but we're gonna clean it up in just a second. Basically have my I do week calendar turned on for when I do this because now I can kind of make actionable steps and inform decisions for me to get closer to that I do week. So this is what I'm kind of working with right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn the I do week off because I don't wanna look at it anymore. And we can clearly see I have a lot more white space than I used to have in my calendar. I just need the important things, my work, right, my tasks, et cetera, maybe some date nights, appointments. I need all those things. Everything else I can work around. This is how I generally use my calendar. I'll have little blocks and then I'll have tasks within the blocks. And then I carve out time for the things that are mandatory to me, my morning routine, my evening routine, and my sleep sacred things for my wellness that I want to protect. And then basically everything else, there's room to switch up. If it's not working for me, then it's not working for me. And I definitely have the power to carve out the majority of where I spend my time throughout my week. So that was a little overview of how I used my weekly planner along with Google Calendar to not only build and execute on my IG week, but also scheduling in the realities of my week. Personally, I like to set aside time every week, whether that be a Sunday evening, or I know a lot of people do Monday hour one, first hour of the first day of the work week, whatever time you decide, just making sure that it's consistently every week, you set aside time to do your weekly planning. I like to first make a list of all the mandatory things that must be done, make a list of all the things that help me function as a human being, making a list of all all the things that we want to get done throughout the week that we're hoping to get done. And then making a list for adequate self-care and wind down times. This is my hallmark, my tried and true. I wanna really preserve those wellness practices to help me function as a human. And also being cognizant of your energy levels throughout the day. You might not always be cheery and chipper at 8 a.m. Especially for us women, right? Depending on the phase of our cycle we're in, those energy levels can be different throughout the day and throughout the week. So just being conscious of that. Also something that's important to me is creating calm within my calendar, right? So if it's helpful trying to leave little extra 15 to 30 minute buffers in between so that you're not in a rush to get to your next activity and that helps create essentially more calm and ease throughout the day. Then last thing is to be mindful. Remember to take time even just for five minutes if you can spare it for a check-in, a little body scan, maybe some stretches, getting a little movement in there just to kind of recenter and realign yourself throughout your day. And remember, you got this. Let me know down in the comments below if you found this helpful and let me know what your current favorite system is for planning. You can grab my Mindful Life Notion Pack with all of these included templates down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and stay mindful. Bye.